Candida is fourth commonest isolate from blood cultures in hospitalized patients. And it also carries a high mortality of 40 to 50 percent. Invasive candidiasis was not known before 1940s, before the use of antibiotics. Invasive fungal infections remain a nosocomial disease. And with the growing number of diagnostic and therapeutic modalities in medical field, the susceptible population is growing. And many a times, it is an enigma for doctors and physicians and surgeons to decide which patient to test for and which drug to use. Here, I am Professor Anuradha Sharma, bringing you an insight on some important serious fungal infections through a collection of recent articles the U.S. was able to reduce the incidence of candidemia in the beginning of this century by introducing prevention bundles for central line associated bloodstream infections. In a study in Italy, they evaluated by autopsy in AIDS patients what percentage of invasive fungal infections were detected when they were alive? And it was found invasive aspergillosis was detected only in 12% patients and candidiasis in only 20% patients. Whereas cryptococcal meningitis stood grounds with better detection rates. So let's see what's there in these articles. There is a growing need to think fungus. And for this, CDC has introduced Fungal Disease Awareness Week during the third week of September every year after 2017. In 2017, there was a unprecedented rise in valley fever patients by 58% in southwestern USA. And according to guidelines for community acquired pneumonia, it covers only bacterial and viral causes. So CDC has introduced now for their three important endemic mycosis, that is coccidiomycosis, histoplasmosis, and blastomycosis, diagnostic algorithms based on serological tests by detecting antigen and antibody in a simple non-invasive sample like serum or urine for these important contributors of community-acquired pneumonia, which have become important with the large immunocompromised population. There is also a change in their distribution with time because of improved diagnostic tests and climate change, travel and migration has introduced these endemic mycosis in new areas. So it's important for physicians to remain aware about their risk factors and presentations and think about them in various group of patients. Global Action Fund for Fungal Infection is a NGO group which has introduced uh, 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 that WHO should uh, bring essential diagnostic test in every country uh, for fungal infections and essential medicine list for fungal infections for every country. So uh, 
they have one very informative image where these black boxes show the immunosuppressed or predisposing risk factors for various invasive fungal infections with these colored boxes showing the relevant pathogens and their size depicts the burden they cause in this risk group there are also other neglected tropical diseases uh, which occur in normal patients who are not immunocompromised so fungal keratitis remains a very important cause of blindness especially in resource limited countries there is emergence of a new species of tinea uh, uh, trichophyton indotini which carries a uh, high drug resistance for tabinafine a commonly used uh, drug for ringworm infections which has appeared in many countries after india in 2019 other important uh, subcutaneous mycosis uh, which create lot of disability in patients are also important so it's very important to generate awareness among clinicians uh, dermatologists podiatrists about mycetoma because of its chronic nature and difficult to treat for early recognition and uh, taking early support of laboratory to identify it they also say that all mass lesions and abscesses should be investigated for fungal infections with growing uh, importance in various manifestations sporotrichosis has emerged in brazil in uh, in a large way in housewives and in children which is acquired from cats and there are new species of uh, this pathogen emerging na globally who has introduced fungal priority pathogen uh, list with a uh, 19 uh, species listed in three categories high priority um, critical priority and moderate priority in critical priority there are four important pathogens cryptococcus neoformans which is responsible for high mortality because of cryptococcal meningitis in aids patients it is also seen in developed countries but there is a vast difference in mortality rates in resource limited countries uh, and a major effort is being done to introduce uh, treatments which are easily amenable to poor populations so they have uh, done a study where a uh, single high dose liposomal amphotericin b uh, dose has been introduced followed by azoles in combination uh, with 5 flu uh, cytosine so that uh, it brings down the cost of the therapy and makes it easily available for the patients another species of cryptococcus cryptococcus getae is also in this list uh, it has emerged in a new area that is vancouver islands though it was prevalent in australia and Uh, due to climatic changes it has emerged in new hot spots uh, of canada and it is also infecting more number of immuno competent people so uh, they remain important because of these reasons candida auris as we know is a fungal superbug it uh, gets Uh, colonized on patient skin and it is transmitted from the environment and from healthcare workers to the patient and it has acquired drug resistance 
to at least three classes of antifungus that is azoles it has high drug resistance towards azoles almost it is intrinsically resistant and to polyenes and also emerging resistance to echinocandids it is also resistant to commonly used disinfectants in the uh, hospitals like quaternary ammonium compounds so it is uh, also misdiagnosed in the labs and it leads to outbreaks with high mortality uh, in big hospitals so it's very important to identify it timely and effectively manage by introducing good infection control practices aspergillus fumigatus is acquiring resistance to azoles and uh, it has become the commonest and most important mold for invasive fungal infections with high mortality in neutropenic patients canada albicans still uh reserves its spot in critical uh, pathogen list because it has been observed that despite good icu practices new diagnostic modalities and effective antifungal treatments the mortality because of invasive candidiasis remains same there is no data from resource uh, limited countries or it's a poor data available uh, which is just tip of the iceberg so till we don't know what's the burden how will we manage the situation then there is uh, increasing uh, isolation of course in icu patients in neutropenic patients and it also is leading to breakthrough infections or breakthrough candidemia where uh, like uh, candida uh, glabrata candida cruzii they have got new names now and candida oris um, they cause infection when an antifungal is already being used for prophylactically in uh, a certain group of neutropenic patients then it's also causing sanctuary site infections which are not detected by routine, routinely available diagnostic tests intra abdominal infections are increasingly being reported so are uh, endocarditis because of more number of candidemia uh, so there is a stress on detecting candidemia rapidly most widely used is blood culture which takes 3 to 5 days to detect the infection and we know the mortality increases by 10% every day uh so people are looking for uh, biomarkers or rapid tests uh to institute the therapy to prevent emergence of breakthrough infections or to uh, uh, institute antifungal stewardship and there is a recent article published which shows that candida albicans igm uh, was positive sooner than beta d glucan test uh so beta d glucan test uh is a biomarker with poor sensitivity with lot of false positive and false negatives but there are uh, different guidelines and uh, there is a study on which is called equal candida score where they compared patients uh, with cvc and without cvc and they assess these patients for uh the uh, use of uh, all the uh, recommendations in guidelines and they found that they scored these recommendations and higher the score there was higher uh, survival rate in patients so it's very important to follow these guidelines as much as possible 
but how to do it so there are studies where people have introduced certain checklists uh, to manage patients uh, of candidemia candidemia was also reported earlier in uh, uh, 2006 there is a very interesting case report where a patient who had undergone uh, 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 this uh, intrauterine insemination acquired uh, infection with candida glabrata and lost the fetus due to infection and developed fungemia and this fungemia recurred later on in the same patient as relapse and with azote resistance similarly and this uh, patient was immunocompetent so it's not only that immunocompromised patients will present with these infections even immunocompetent patients because of some uh, intervention can manifest infections another uh, case here only mentioned is where there was a retained intrauterine device and patient developed severe fungemia because of it these uh, recurrences or relapses occur because of biofilm formation on devices so it's very important to manage devices in a case of candidemia and it does not pertain only to a cvc and ideally a cvc should be replaced within 24 hours if it is permissible and another cvc if needs to be inserted should be done after 24 hours and of course the it should not be done over a guide wire other catheter should also be uh, replaced because they can also be source of the infection in these patients there is another important issue in fungal infections is use of corticosteroids they have very limited use in fungal infections just one is in hiv patients if, uh, with uh, pneumocystis zero psi pneumonia and uh, other is uh, in uh, primary coccidiomycosis uh, to rapidly control ards and iris in cryptococcal meningitis rest all the places corticosteroid leads to worsening of infection with higher mortality with almost two or three times higher mortality seen in patients who receive steroids because corticosteroids interfere with uh, the neutrophil function there is also another thing that azoles and corticosteroids they lead to drug drug interactions and there is possibly over exposure of steroids in these patients it was found uh, during covid-19 pandemic when patients hospitalized in uh, icus were given uh, antibiotics along with antifungals and corticosteroids they ended up with uh, more resistant fungi like trichosporin acai which is intrinsically resistant and which is also a commensal in the gut or on the skin and it because of the severe dysbiosis it was able to produce uh, infection in these patients and there have been several reports from some parts of the world so combination of this sort leads to severe dysbiosis we must remain aware and we should try to avoid putting our patients through it another important infection 
uh, with high mortality is invasive pulmonary aspergillosis and due, during covid 19 pandemic we have seen how kappa has emerged and led to high mortality in this category of patients it is also being increasingly reported in icu patients uh, and it also causes uh, a wide spectrum of clinical manifestations in different population of patients so uh, of course invasive aspergillosis is seen in severely immunocompromised patients uh, in neutropenic patients in patients of chemotherapy uh, in solid organ transplant in uh, hematopoietic stem cell transplant in lung transplant patients patients on corticosteroids in uh, chronic granulomatous disease patients uh, and many other uh, predisposing uh, conditions are important so chronic pulmonary aspergillosis is very commonly missed in uh, uh, copd patients and in tuberculosis and uh, in uh, resource limited countries where these infections are more common it is often misdiagnosed as mdr tb and patient is put on anti tubercular uh, anti tubercular treatment unnecessarily so it it is very important to reach a proper diagnosis for antimicrobial stewardship whether it is antifungal antibiotic or uh, anti tubercular drugs the other manifestation is allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis which is seen in asthmatic patients uh, with severe asthma or in cystic fibrosis patients recently a study has been published where uh, they have analyzed adult patients for invasive aspergillosis in australia and new zealand and they have found increasingly uh, this uh, being reported in immunocompetent patients and also rising incidence in azole resistance in non fumigator species yet another important opportunistic invasive fungal infection is mucomycosis and india has seen almost a tsunami of patients of covid associated mucomycosis especially presenting as rhino orbito cerebral mucomycosis because of a large population of undetected diabetes mellitus put on corticosteroids for managing covid symptoms whereas this infection mucomycosis already existed in india 70 times more in prevalence than rest of the world and we know that it is a infection which is difficult to diagnose because it is not easy to uh see it under a microscope because of its ribbon like structure it can be missed as a artifact very easily and uh, other reason is it's difficult to grow in culture and molecular diagnosis is not so easily available uh, in most of the places it carries high mortality and high morbidity and even if patient survives patient is disfigured and maybe with loss of one eye with evisceration so it is a medical and surgical emergency where uh, multiple teams manage the patient as soon as possible ideally patient should be on ot table within 3 hours of receiving in the emergency and a microscopy report should be available within 30 minutes of collecting the sample uh there are 
global guidelines now to manage uh, mucormycosis and liposomal amphotericin B in high doses remain the first line agent and isavuconazole and posaconazole can be used for step down therapy or for salvage therapy. Amphotericin B deoxycholate is uh, has a recommendation against its use because of its nephrotoxicity and treatment required here is for prolonged period. Fusarium solenae has led to an outbreak in Mexico and some parts of USA with fungal meningitis where with the use of anesthetic agents in cosmetic surgery uh, patients manifested with symptoms very late uh, and uh, it was detected with the help of beta d glucan test in csf that there is a fungal etiology and so uh, uh, there is a publication on this. I believe everybody should go through this. And there are also global guidelines now for diagnosis and management of rare mold infections. So with the use of antifungal agents for prophylaxis in special population like neutropenic patients, breakthrough infections were difficult to treat fungal agents are increasingly being reported with fusarium, with lomentospora. So fusarium solenae uh, is uh, reported very commonly uh, uh, after aspergillus and mucarase uh, as a highline mold which carries high mortality in immunocompromised patients and it is easily detected uh, in blood cultures and it needs treatment with voriconazole. Here liposomal amphotericin B is not effective and uh, lomentospora is reported from the arid regions of Australia, Spain and USA. It is the most resistant fungal agent with inherent resistant to most of the uh, antifungal agents available and it should be treated with voriconazole with terbinafine according to these new guidelines because it carries high mortality then pseudosporium is a pathogen of temperate climate and uh, it has been associated with eumycetoma and leading to secondary CNS involvement. And it is also associated with near drowning uh, experiences where it leads to CNS infection. Uh, there is increasing need to tackle this emerging antifungal uh, drug resistance with increasing use of azole fungicides in agriculture industry. There is almost a 400% increase in its usage across many large countries on our planet. So this article shows there is environmental fungal antimicrobial resistance antimicrobial resistance originating in patient and then nosocomial spread. All these AMR can be addressed by specific strategies. So here in the environment, most important has been azole resistance in aspergillus fumigators, the emergence of candida auris suddenly on five continents, then uh, uh, of course, increase in mucormycota and fusarium, and there are some zoonotic infections like sporothrix and trichophyton endotini emerging. So it is, of course, climate change is responsible, then fungicide residues present in the environment are leading to this 
emergence and environmental antifungal stewardship is important and it has become an uh, a part of one health one world uh, uh, cause horizontal gene transfer is not seen in fungal uh, species it is um, the drug resistance is because of two reasons either the isolate is intrinsically resistant and it is becoming important that we identify the species of the fungal isolates with the help of sequencing because cryptic species are being reported intrinsically resistant to many commonly used antifungal agents so one is intrinsic resistance and other is selection pressure so when a particular uh, antifungal is used like azole so azole resistant uh, fungal isolates will emerge as causative agent so we know candida glabrata candida cruzii then aspergillus fumigatus uh, cryptic species are there which are resistant uh, to various agents then dermatophytes so basically it is because these are mostly fungi static agents especially azoles so if we are not using adequate uh, concentration of drug required for a particular presentation then we are exposing the pathogen to develop this uh, acquired resistance so antifungal stewardship becomes very important to manage this kind of emergence of drug resistance and therefore molecular diagnosis is also important there are many fungal pathogens which can be transmitted uh, from patient to patient like candida auris candida parasilosis and some dermatophytes so uh, uh, and they are usually transmitted by the hands of healthcare workers so there we need to implement good infection control practices and surveillance will uh, boost the uh, effort so this sort of rapid emergence of antifungal um, resistance in various uh, fungi because of different reasons puts us under a threat that we may be facing something uh, uh, very unexpected in our future like uh, there is a worldwide emergence of candida parasilosis after 2018 with a rapid surge being reported across different countries in the world and we know that candida parasilosis infects premature neonates and here in this uh, the scenario has changed it is infecting adults and there is high mortality and it is a clonal outbreak with azole resistant uh uh candida parasilosis and good infection control practices are also not effective against and in 2020 it has evolved further to have uh, acquired resistance towards echinocandens there are other new agents being detected like a novel dimorphic fungi amargomyces which causes infections in aids patients and resembles histoplasmosis clinically and histopathologically a lot and it can be identified only by sequencing then there are other uh, Uh, infections which are neglected and present in tropical and subtropical countries and they can be life threatening in some situations so like one of the anthemophthora mycosis that is basidio bolus renarum it causes uh, uh, lesions in children usually 
below the waist and there is mass like lesions and they can appear also in the intestine or intra abdominally and lead to some serious obstruction there has been uh, this concern about antifungal use in pregnancy and uh, uh, there is a big relief that fluconazole which is so commonly used for vulva vaginal candidiasis is a teratogen and should not be used during first trimester of pregnancy but with several evidence based studies it is acceptable acceptable to use it as single dose of 150 mg only once during first trimester for vulvo vaginal candidiasis but remember a uh, 300 mg dose is teratogenic so uh, uh, studies and surveillance are very important which can affect um these important aspects of clinical practice and amphotericin b remains the drug of choice for invasive fungal infections in pregnant women other drug nistatin is also acceptable it has been realized that um in 16% of patients of invasive candidiasis just to receive injectable antifungal treatment they had to prolong their hospital stay by 16 days so therefore uh, there has been several studies and uh, new antifungal agents are being uh, 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 devised for this sort of use and there's a good news with Ibrexa fungerb has been uh, approved by FDA for use in recurrent or chronic vulvo vaginal candidiasis there are other agents uh, with a beautiful uh, spectrum uh, published in this uh, article so we know fosfanojapex it has the broadest spectrum of uh, Uh, activity and it affects moles and yeast and yeast like uh, uh, organism and except candida cruzii it is effective against most so it will be a sub- oral substitute of uh, amphotericin b then it breaks a fun gerb as i told you it has been approved for uh, oral use in a uh, recurrent vulvo vaginal candidiasis olorofim is anti mold um, anti fungal agent so it acts on aspergillus and endemic mycosis so it is anti mold then um, this opalconazole is for uh, uh inhalational use to prevent uh, infection in lung transplant patients raza fungin has raised the hopes because it can it has a long half life and it can be used on outpatient basis in patients who need echinocandins for prolonged period and it has a one uh, once weekly regime there are also studies um, where nanocrystal amphotericin b uh, has been studied in aids patient for cryptococcal meningitis with very promising results and so this will be orally available and at the same time uh, amphotericin b has been studied uh, for histoplasmosis in aids patient as single high dose of liposomal amphotericin b uh, with very promising results um so it's very important to assess uh the laboratory and management capacity of various levels of hospitals in every country and this is a very um, informative article from italy uh, where they have mentioned 
the different tests and therapies available remember therapeutic drug monitoring is very important to uh, get optimum results with such expensive toxic drugs and um, uh, to prevent uh, uh, any uh, you know uh, delay in getting results of the therapy at the same time uh, they are also studying that different definitions of proven probable or possible invasive fungal infections in icu patients whereas these definitions are available only for neutropenic patients so emerging mold infections will uh, is a reality for physicians and remain prepared to meet unexpected fungi there is no fungal isolate non pathogenic in today's scenario if it can be proven that it is a true cause of infection and for that rely on histopathology because in culture it's difficult to differentiate from contamination and commensal presence of the organism 